Hi, it's Midnight Mule. Today is Friday the 15th of May 2020 and it's just about nine o'clock in the evening, BST that is. Uh, so I thought I'd give another update on the flags. It's a month and two days since the last one. This is where we were a month ago. This is the grid we have downstairs. These are the flags of the first bunch of countries. Is bunch the right collective noun for countries? I don't know. Somebody let me know what it is if you like in the comments. And the way we were looking at it was we were looking at the last five days and whether in the last five days there had been more days where the infection had gone up or down. And the same with the number of deaths. Had the number of deaths each day increased or decreased? And the way we were working it was that the lower, if I get my mouse right, the lower left was the naughty corner, the upper right was the good corner. So one month ago we had two countries in the good corner, none in the naughty corner. This is it this morning, or today rather, which is based on yesterday's figures. We now have four in the good corner and none down here. Have the flag centre of gravity moved? Possibly slightly, but certainly not an awful lot. So I'm just going to give an update on some of the countries and see what's been going on. So within the squares, there's been eight non-movers. So all these countries a month ago were in the same box. We have 12 boxes here, the same box as they were a month ago. Now between then and now, they would have shuffled around a bit, no doubt. But this is the as of now where they're at. We have 20 that are in a worse state. And I'm going to have a look at a couple of these just so we can see should we be concerned or not. And we have 26 that are in a better state than they were a month ago regarding each day do we have more infections or fewer infections, more deaths or fewer deaths. And the arrows are the direction that they've moved since the last one. So uh, for example this one here has come down the way, this one's come across the way. And I'm taking infections which is the x value as the most important because deaths naturally follow the infections. And of course, different countries we know are recording infections and particularly deaths differently. But we may or may not get onto that, I don't know. So I just want to now jump and look at some countries. So the Czech Republic was one of the countries that is worse off by our measurements than a month ago. So let's look in details at this. This is from worldometers.info coronavirus site. This is obviously time across at the bottom here and we can see generally over the last month and a bit there's no doubt that on average the Czech Republic's numbers in, for infections has been decreasing. So why are they on the left in the naughty part of our board? Well for that we need to look in details over the last several days. So I'm going to zoom in on this area here. Just notice my big head up there. I'm going to make me a little bit smaller. Shove me in the corner. There we go. I'm down in the naughty corner. Of course I'm never there in real life. So zooming in on that, so these are the last five days, one, two, three, four, five. So based on the previous day, five days ago, the number of infections increased and there's an increase down, up, up. So in the last five days, it's gone up four times and down once. And if we do that for the whole period, we can see there are a lot of days where it is increasing, far fewer it's increasing than decreasing. But what's happening is it's going up and there's a sudden drop that should have been a green arrow there, oops, sorry. And then it's going up again. That one's right, yep. Sorry, it's going a bit mad. So it's very up and down. So then to look at it in a bit more detail, if we expand the time frame we're looking at, it appears to be going down slightly, but it's still very up and down. Now each country, of course, have their own health system and their own way of reporting. And certainly here in the UK, weekends reporting is going to be different to other days in the week. So perhaps Mondays they're using Sunday's figures that maybe were collected on the Saturday or the Sunday, maybe a collection of the days, variety of the days, but it's not consistent. So it is very up and down. So what we've done here is we've taken every seventh day. So whatever day of the week this particular day was, we've got a day one, two, three, four, five, six, there it is again. So this particular day of the week, we can certainly see has been decreasing. We're looking at Czech Republic here. 
And if we do that for each of the days of the week, a pattern emerges where, by and large, this one's slightly dodgy, but you'd have, still have to say, on average, it is decreasing. That one's very dodgy, but possibly still decreasing. But I think we can say with a certain amount of confidence the Czech Republic, even in the recent past, is decreasing. But because of the way it goes, gradually goes up in a big drop, gradually goes up in a big drop, it's on the naughty left side. Now that isn't true for all the ones that are on the left side. If we consider South Africa, they relate to the party and they're clearly going up. They're still in the upward phase. I suspect over the next month they'll be leveling out and coming down because that's the pattern everywhere as we'll be seeing. Russia are green because they're this again daily rate comparison thing is better than it was a month ago. And this is how their charts looking. They're possibly starting to level off a bit now. Now I just want to say something about Russia and their deaths in the UK and their deaths counting. The Russian deaths are very low compared to their population and the number of infections they've had. Now in the UK, if you have an underlying condition and maybe you're not going to last much longer anyway, and you're in hospital and they test you for coronavirus and you come back positive, even if you have no symptoms and then you die, that's counted as a COVID-19 death because you died with the disease. That's in no way the UK doing anything underhanded to try and inflate their figures. That's the way the UK just record their deaths. If you die, you have three conditions that are fatal conditions. All three are recorded on a death certificate. Russia are taking a different approach. The way they record deaths is if you had, say, pneumonia and something else, and you had the coronavirus, and then you died, it was the pneumonia that killed you, not the coronavirus. So the deaths that Russia are recording are only those people that did not have underlying health issues, and prior to getting coronavirus, they were healthy, and then they died. They're counting as coronavirus deaths. So it's you really can't compare one country to another to see which country is better off or worse off. You can only compare one country against itself and look at what's happening over time. Now there are lots of discussions regarding which countries are being honest or perhaps dishonest with their numbers and I'm not going in anywhere near that in this video. So um, back to where we are. Let's have a look what we've got next. The United Kingdom. Sorry about the garish colours, I just wanted them to show up. Red being bad, green being good. So United Kingdom, now we had Bojo, Boris Johnson on the television lot, always talking about trying to suppress the curve. So I, from all the experts that I've heard and all the politicians, they all acknowledge for any of these viruses or pandemics that go around, the curve, as you're looking at it, goes up and then down again. That's how I look at it, sorry. As you look at it, it goes up and down. And whether you do absolutely nothing or you decide to do incredible quarantining it's still going to go up and down nobody is predicting an up exponential curve until everyone dies or everyone gets it and the reason for the up and down the theory behind that is diseases tend to get the low-hanging fruit and they go very quickly and then it's much harder to get anyone else so how much difference the quarantining has made in these countries it's possible we we'll never know it's likely it has reduced the number, or at least spread the number out. It may be people who are going to get it today and won't be around with us in a month's time without the quarantine would have got it a month earlier. Some lives may have been saved. We, It's one of these things because you can't replay what happened. We won't actually know. But anyway, all that said, I think it's fair to say here in the United Kingdom, it is gradually going down now. We're lifting uh, some of our restrictions so it's going to be very interesting to see if we continue going down at the same rate or if it levels off a bit earlier than we'd like. America, I know there'd be some people watching this from America so better have a quick look at them. They are again I believe slightly on the downward slope and I'm aware if you don't maybe count uh, New York, the state of New York, the downward slope isn't quite as much but I've checked out various of the states 
and generally they are going down so they are also now past the peak and the United States from what I've seen more than most other countries have had protests and people acting against or saying things against the lockdown what's interesting over there is their the way they've got their benefit scheme working if you're unemployed you can get double the minimum wage so they're getting like I think it's over four grand a month people who aren't working and just staying at home now two obvious downsides of this one is if a job does become available and it's minimum wage you're just above who's going to take it why would you take a job taking a pay cut when you get more money staying at home doing whatever it is you're at home another downside of course is it has a massive negative effect on the economy because all this stimulus the money they're having to create out of nothing is all debt to pay these people to stay at home will all have to be paid back in taxes in the future and so they're making a massive massive debt to do all this but I'll, if I remember I'll come to the economy at the end now I wanted to look at the Nordic countries which are of course Iceland, Denmark, Norway, Finland, Sweden they're the ones that are on the map that we're using downstairs now we do also have Greenland and the Faroe Islands but one they're not on our chart at all because they didn't they weren't one of the first ones to breach a thousand but two according to the site we look at they don't currently have any coronavirus cases everyone who did have it tested positive have recovered so uh, they're not included for that reason so just to whiz through these Iceland population of just somewhere over 300,000 this is an estimate the population from 2018 according to Wikipedia now it's obviously an estimate based on the calculation because it ends in 518 normally when you estimate you go to the nearest so many zeros so anyway that's an aside there so that population they were peaking around 75 at their maximum per day but they've clearly broken the back of this Denmark similar story population getting near 6 million but there again going down their peak was around the 300 a day mark Norway 5.3 million 5.4 million maybe their peak was around the 200 mark Finland was pretty much level that's five and a half million roughly but they're certainly on the way down now one of the reasons I wanted to look at these this set of countries apart from they've all got nice looking flags they're all very similar if you like that sort of thing is Sweden's been in the news an awful lot and there obviously isn't really green in the Sweden flag that's just the photo I took from the board had a flag above it with green in it and just banging that image on there so Sweden's been quite flat it's been in the news because they've had a very liberal approach to the lockdown their approach has been cafes are still open but you need to keep a distance don't meet in groups of larger than 50 and their curve isn't that much different to the curve in the United Kingdom I'm very pleased to see their curve isn't just going up up and up exponentially but we're just being a little bit careful as they have been clearly careful they've been peaking maybe around the 700 mark a population of just over 10 million and theirs is under control so the UK economy is going to be absolutely hammered as is the US as is many other countries because Sweden managed to keep working to quite a large extent their economy probably won't be hit quite as badly now we did look at Russia earlier and I believe Putin's trying to get the Russians very much back to work even though they're kind of at the top now very slightly coming down so it will be very interesting there again to see if they come down or if they flatten off at a very high number but countries are in danger of maybe flattening the curve but their economy is going to be in dire straits okay so that <laughs> asked me going back to that that was all I had there so with the economy just a quick word on that I believe in the UK they've said the GDP figures are down 2% for the first quarter and they said oh that's because of the lockdown the first quarter is January February March and I believe it was around the 23rd of March the lockdown came in place 
So for just over a week of the first quarter, and we're down 2%. Now, I think the figures would have been very weak anyway. It's not just because of the lockdown and the virus generally. The second quarter, which of course we won't know until June, July, they'd be making estimates, no, July, August, I guess, somewhere around there. In the UK, we're going to be get absolutely hammered. It's going to be so massively, massively down. People are starting to go back to work. Some people are, if you have to go back to work. But the economy's in a really bad state. For example, some cafes aren't yet open, but when they do open, you're going to have to have maybe one person a table and you're going to have a fraction of the normal custom you'd normally have. Restaurants aren't going to be able to afford to open. A lot of restaurants are only just making a small profit or maybe making a small loss. That's when times were good, but now they, they're just not going to get the custom and they're going to have to get the staff back in. So I think I think they're going to really struggle. And in America, it's going to be worse, of course, because why would you go back and wait on tables, which you rely on tips, when you could stay at home and get double minimum wage? That doesn't make sense either. And of course, there's the knock-on effect. So I've been working at home the last five or six weeks. The estate that I used to work on, there was a guy there, Andy in the van, we'd call him, he used to sell bacon butties, egg butties, these sort of things. And he was making enough to keep going back and he's not a millionaire, but he was doing okay. But people like him, he's obviously not been working the last several weeks. And it may be the numbers would be months and months before they return. So many, many people like him, it's not going to be worth getting out of bed. He's not going to be able to cover his costs of having his van and buying the food and everything. So there's going to be millions of people in the UK and many more in America and other countries all across the world who just aren't going to be earning. So they're not going to be paying the taxes. So there's going to be more stimulus in the economy. So we'd definitely be down for the second quarter. I suspect we'd be down for the third and probably down for the fourth as well. Even if the only way we wouldn't be down for the fourth quarter is if everyone went back to work in the next few weeks without restrictions, then we might turn things around. But no country is going to do, no country in the West is going to do that. Some other countries may do it and it would be very interesting to see what happens. So I hope that was of interest to some of you. I've tried to be careful not to give too much of an opinion what I think about coronavirus or something is interesting or I find interesting. I've been out two or three times, had to take a car for the service and then been to a shop a couple of times. And I live in the, uh, I live in Cheshire and there are definitely two types of people that I've come across. There's the first type that are really scared, really nervous. You have to keep two meters. You'll get a dirty look if you're close to two meters to them. And there's the other type of person who clearly doesn't think it's much of a threat. They'll walk right by you. Everything's fine. Not a problem. And I would guess the split was maybe sl maybe 45% are in the camp of oh, there's nothing to worry about. Everything will be all right. And 55% are perhaps a bit nervous and being very, very cautious. And I just find that interesting. I'd be interested to know in other parts of the country, other parts of the world, what the feeling is. If the sentiment is, this is going to kill us all, we're all going to die, let's all be really careful. Or if it's, if people are thinking this is super overhyped, there's nothing to worry about, we, can, we could just carry on as normal. Anyway, like I said, I hope some of that was interesting. Uh, I've got another video in mind for this Aspie channel that's got nothing to do with any of this, but I necessarily need to wait another couple of weeks before I can do that one, if I do it at all. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.